let's do a quick revision on control relay and timer relay. So in figure one, you will see the control relay over here, one CR coil, and this is the contact normally open and normally closed. Okay. On the left is the power line, on the right is the ground. Okay. As you can see over now, when the coil is not energized, okay, the contact will stay at its original position. Okay. So you see one CR over here, it will stay open. And one CR normally closed will stay normally closed. Hence you see that power can actually go through and light up the light bulb 2LB. So 2LB is now lighted up now. What happens when I turn on the toggle switch? When I turn on this toggle switch, you will see that one CR coil will be energized. The contact will change. Normally open will become normally open help close. One LB will turn on. Normally close will become normally close help open. 2LB will turn off. Okay, let's watch this simulation. When I turn on 1TS, you can see that 1CR now is being energized. Normally open has become closed. 1LB has turned on. And normally closed has become open. Hence, 2LB is now off. Now, I shall turn off the toggle switch again and de-energize the coil. And you will see that 2LB will turn on because all the contacts will be back to its original position. Okay, you can see that 2LB is now on as compared to just now. Okay, so you need to have this basic understanding of control relay. Let me repeat again. When the coil is being energized, the contact will change. Okay, normally open will become normally open help close. Normally close will become normally close help open. If the coil is not being energized, the contact will stay at its original position. Normally open will stay normally open and normally close will stay normally close. And hence, you can see current can go to 2LB to light up. Now, let's take a look at figure 2. Figure 2 over here, we are using timer relay. Okay, this is the timer relay with a 3 second timing. This is a normally open timer contact, normally close timer contact. As you can see, the toggle switch is open now. Timer relay coil is not energized. Normally closed timer relay contact will stay closed, okay? Because the coil is not energized, so it will stay at its original position, which is closed. Hence, current can go to 2LB to light up. Now, what happens when I turn on the toggle switch? You can see that when I turn on this toggle switch, the timer relay coil is still not being energized completely yet because it needs to wait for 3 seconds. So 3 seconds later, you can see this timer contact will become normally open help close. This timer contact will become normally close help open. And you can see that 1LB is now on, 2LB is now off. If I In today's lesson, we are going to go through EP4, Electro Pneumatic uh, Worksheet number 4, okay, which we will learn about latching circuits and how do we design electrical control. Okay, so first, let's take a look at the concept of latching circuits. We will start off with simple start-stop control. Okay, so do you still remember how to draw a push button? Well, you can draw a push button. Um using this symbol. They have a normally open and a normally close. Okay. So which button will you put into this circuit here? Remember, I always said that positive is here, negative is here. So this is the positive supply, this is the negative supply. In order for the light bulb to light up, current must pass through from left to right and light up the light bulb. So, should I choose a normally open push button or a normally close push button? 
Okay, let's take a look at the normally open push button first. Okay, so if I draw a normally open push button, and I told you before, in every symbol you have to label. Okay, so I call it the one push button, one PB. So imagine when you press this push button, okay, what will happen to this push button? You'll become normally open, help close, and hence the light bulb will light up. Okay, so you can visualize that. However, let's draw the normally close push button now. Okay, if I draw a normally close push button, okay, what does that mean? It means that if I did not press the push button, it's normally close, hence the current will just pass through and light up the light bulb. Do you agree? Without even pressing the push button. But is that what we want? No. What we want is when you press the push button, the light bulb will turn on. When you release the push button, the light bulb will turn off. So the answer is a normally open 1 PB. Okay. Okay. Revision again. Positive is always on the left, negative is on the right, okay? And input elements, push button is an input element, is always on the left, okay? We always start from who will trigger what, okay? In other words, when you press the push button, it will turn on the light bulb. Okay, now let's go and look at detent switch, okay? Basically, detent switch and push button is about the same. But there is a difference. Push button, when you press and then you release, it will go back to its normal position. In other words, if the push button is normally open, when you press, it will become close. Normally open, how close. However, when you release your push button, your finger release the button, it will immediately spring back to normally open. Okay. However, for a detent switch, it's just like a emergency stop switch. Okay. Whereby, the moment you press, it will stay close. And even if you let go of a hand, it will still stay close. The only way to release this switch is by twisting the switch and releasing it. Okay? So, I will draw a normally open detent switch over here. Okay, so this is the detent switch. Okay, I draw again for you to see. It's just like a spring here. And this is a normally open detent switch. Okay. So, I call this 1DS. DS stands for detent switch. So, the key difference between a detent switch and push button is when you press the detent switch, it will stay close until you twist and release it. Okay. However, for push button, the moment you release the push button, it will go back to its normal position. So that's the key difference between a detent switch and a push button. So before I go on to part B, whereby we teach you how to do typical stop-stop control with push button switches, I would like to go through some simulation circuits with you to illustrate to you why we need latching okay, for push buttons. And how do we control um, such a circuit? Now I'm going to show you three simulation circuits over here. Um, the reason is because I want to teach you how does a latching circuit works, why do we need a latching circuit, and when do we use them, okay? So let's take a, take a look at figure one first. In figure one, this is an electrical ladder diagram. So I have to left hand side 24 volts, right hand side ground, I have the normally open push button, control relay coil, control relay contact, and a light bulb over here. So can you imagine that when I press this 1PB, the coil will be energized, the contact will change to close because initially it was open, now it will be normally open, held close, and the light bulb will turn on. The moment I release this push button, the coil will not be energized, no more power, the contact will stay at this original position which is open, the light bulb will goes off. So let's take a look at this simulation circuit now. When I press this push button, the control relay will be energized, the contact will change to close, 
the light bulb will be on. The moment I release my finger at the push button, okay, you can see that the coil is no longer energized, no more power, the contact will stay open, the light bulb is now off. Okay, so what this means is when you press the push button, the light bulb will be on. The moment you release the push button, the light bulb will be off. Okay, so do you find it a bit troublesome that in order to know the light bulb, you need to keep pressing the button? Well, I, I would have think that is very troublesome. So I want to make my circuit more intelligent. So what do I mean by more intelligent? I want to press the light bulb. I mean, sorry, I want to press the push button. And the moment I press the push button, the light bulb will turn on and I will just release my finger at the push button and the light bulb will still stay on. Okay, so I want to have this type of intelligent control. How do I achieve that? Well, in order to achieve this, let's take a look at figure 2 now. I will have this thing called latching circuit. Okay, so what do I mean by latching circuit? It means that the contact of the control relay is powering on its own coil okay well that may sound a bit um difficult to understand for you um if you have not visualized the circuit so let me show you how this work first then you can appreciate what i mean by latching okay so when i press this push button over here okay you can see that this coil will be energized the contact will close okay and this contact will also close because the coin is being energized. The light bulb will stay on. The moment I release my finger over here, okay, I release the push button. Can you see that the light bulb still stays on? Why? Well, that's because the contact of this control relay is still close, okay? Because previously I have already turned it on, correct? I already turn on the coil. That's why this contact is closed. Even if I release my finger over here at the push button, this contact still stays closed and powering on the control relay coil. Okay, and the light bulb will stay on. However, there's a flaw in this circuit. I cannot turn off the light bulb now. Why? It's because even if I press the push button again, release again, this contact control relay is still closed and it's still powering on the coil. So there's no means and ways for me to off the light bulb unless I off the whole electrical supply to this circuit. Okay, which I'm going to do that again. Uh, I'm going to do now Okay, by stopping my simulation and I will turn on my simulation again. You can see that, oh, the light bulb is off. But if is this what we want? No, because it's not that intelligent. As in, once it turns on, it always stays there. Okay, let's have a look at how it turns on again. So can you see that when I press the 1 PB, okay, initially it's normally open. The moment I press, it will become normally open, help close. The coil will be energized and the contact will change to close and the light bulb will stay on. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, even if I release my push button, you can see that the light bulb will stay on. Okay, forever. Okay, um, in control circuits, we don't want things to turn off forever and the only way to turn it off is to off the power supply. This is not intelligent control, okay? So now, I'm going to improve this figure 2 circuit to something more intelligent, whereby I can off the light bulb as when I like, okay? So now, take a look at figure 3. Figure 3, I introduce uh, another button called 2PB. Okay, so let's take a look at how it works. When I press 1PB, the light bulb stays on. Okay, even if I release my 1PB, the light bulb is still on because of the latching circuit. Okay, the latching circuit just below the push button. Okay, so the way to turn off the light bulb is to press this. 2 PB. You can see that the moment I press, it will become open and then the light bulb will go off. Okay, you just need to press and release 2 PB. Okay, let's see the circuit again. When I press 1 PB and let go, 
the coin is being energized, the contact will close and the light bulb will be on because the coin is constantly being energized. So to off the light bulb, I just need to de-energize the coin so that the contact will go back to open position. It will stay at open position, which is its original position. So let's see. The moment I press 2 BB, open the circuit and release it back, okay, the light bulb is off. Hence, figure 3 is what we are going to teach you. And you can see from figure 3, to summarize, I can say that things always have a start and a stop, okay. So you can see that to start this one light LB or to turn on this one LB, all you need to do is to press 1 PB, okay? And to turn off this 1 LB, I just need to press 2 PB, okay? Of course, with the help of this latching circuit. So I hope you understand why a latching circuit is important in most circuit control. And you can know how to use them to help you to achieve the control that you want for that particular scenario. Okay, so let's go back to the worksheet now. Now we are back to the worksheet and so far you should know why we need a latching circuit for our push buttons. Okay, so let's take a closer look at these two examples here. We have this um, dominant off latching circuit and a dominant on latching circuit. Okay, so let's start off with this dominant off latching circuit first. Okay. So they say that when a push button is actuated momentarily, light will be on, the light will turn off and the stop push button is actuated. Okay, first you must understand what's the meaning of momentarily. Momentarily means you press and one or two seconds later, uh, you let go. Okay, so let me give you a more precise example. So let's take a look at this 1PB. It's normally open 1PB. Okay, so when you press this 1PB, it will become normally open, help close. One or two seconds later, you release your finger. You're not pressing this push button anymore. This push button will go back to its normal position, which is normally open. Okay, so that's what I meant by momentarily. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this circuit. I will label plus minus first. Okay. So we know that input should be on the left and signal processing, final control output should be on the right. Okay, that's how we always draw the electrical ladder diagram. So let's take a look at how this circuit works. When you press the 1PB, current will flow through and turn on the coil. Okay, when you turn on the coil of the control relay, what happened to the contact? Remember previously we mentioned that when the coil is energized, the contact will change. So if you draw normally open, okay, what will it become? You become it will change. So it will change to normally close. Hence, you can see that when you press one PV, one CL will be energized. Okay, this contact will close, and this contact will also close, and the light will turn on. Okay. So the key word here is this contact will also close. This contact will close. The light but will turn on when this coil is being energized. Okay, now you let go of your finger. No more current here. Okay, will this coil be continuously energized to turn on this control relay so that the light bulb turn on? Yes, it will. Why? Because even if you let go of your finger here, previously this control relay is still closed. Okay. Hence, this will power on this control relay, and thus, this contact will close and the light bulb will turn on. Okay, so let me draw for you to visualize. Okay, I will draw in green now. When you close this 1PB, this 1CR will turn on. Okay, this thing will close, this will also close, and the light bulb will turn on. Okay, even if you let go of your push button now. Okay, there's no more power, right? However, because previously, one CI is already closed, so it will power on the coil. That's why it's called latching circuit. It's like the contact is powering on its own coil. Okay, and hence the light bulb will turn, still turns on, okay? Still remains on. 
The question wants you, turn off the light bulb when stop PB is pressed. How do I turn off the light bulb? The only way to turn off the light bulb is to break this circuit over here, okay? This circuit. How do I break it? Well, the only way to break it is to connect it here, okay? Connect the two PB here. So, that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I'll erase this office to prevent confusion. Okay, I will draw a 2PB here and I will draw normally close. Okay, and I will explain to you why. Okay, so let's take a look at the circuit again. When you press 1PB, Okay, because it's normally closed, it will allow current to flow through and the coil will be energized and the contact will close. Okay, because the contact will change when the coil is being energized, so the light bulb will turn on. Okay, even if you let go of your finger here, okay, one light LB is still on because one CR is still being energized as it is being powered by this latching circuit. Okay, and the only way to off this 1CR is to press this 2PB, okay? The moment you press this 2PB, okay, sorry. When you press this 2PB, it will become this way. Correct? And it will become normally closed head open. And there will be no more current flowing through to 1CR. So you break the circuit, there's no more current flowing through to 1CR. And... One CR contact will become open because the coil is not energized. Okay, it will become open and the light bulb will goes off. Okay, that explains why two PB we connect it to be normally closed. Okay, initially. Okay, that's how this lashing circuit works. Okay, and it's called dominant off. Well, later I will explain to you why it's called dominant off. Okay. Now let's take a look at this. There's another way to connect latching circuit, which is a dominant on latching circuit. Again, I'll explain to you how this circuit works first. So imagine when you press one PB, current will flow through, the coil will be energized. Because the coil is energized, the contact will close. Okay, the contact will close and the light bulb will turn on. Okay. This part here is similar to previous, except that this time round, where are we going to connect the two PB? Okay, we are going to connect it here. Okay, so why? Okay, before I go on doing that, um, let me um, backtrack a bit. Okay, so you already press one PB, the control relay is turned on, the contact has changed to close, and the light bulb turns on. Even if you release the one PB, correct? There's still current flowing through to energize the control relay coil and the light bulb still stays on. Okay, now we are going to connect two PB over here. Why? Because I need to off this light bulb. Okay, to off this light bulb, I okay, can just now previously we connect here, which is also correct. But now this time around, I want to connect it here to break the circuit. Okay, and I want to connect normally close. Okay. So if you connect normally close, when you press, it becomes normally close held open. And when you when you becomes normally close held open means that there's no more current flowing to the coil and the light bulb will be off. Okay? So this type of electric circuit we call dominant on. Okay. With this I want to show you the simulation circuit on why this circuit is called dominant off and why this circuit is called dominant on, okay? So let's go to the simulation circuit to have a look now. Now we shall take a look at the dominant off electrical ladder diagram and then later on we will compare with the dominant on electrical ladder diagram and you can see the differences between the two. So let's take a look at this dominant off electrical ladder diagram first whereby when I press one PB momentarily you can see this control relay being turned on okay the coil of this control relay will be on 
and the contact will change, it will close, it will become normally open held close, and hence you can see that light bulb will turn on. Okay, so let's observe this in slow motion whereby I'm going to press the 1 PB and I will let go. You can see that the coil has been energized and then this latching circuit will again provide the continuous path of the current from the 24 volts to energize the 1 CR and hence you can see that the light bulb will be on constantly okay in this case because of the latching circuit here so now when I press 2 PV momentarily okay which you will see in slow motion as well you can see that power is cut off and hence when a coil is no longer energized the contact will go back to its original position which is normally open and hence the light bulb will be off so let's observe this now okay can you see that the light bulb is now off okay so this is how dominant of logic circuit works and remember we said previously that when I press these two buttons together the control relay will not turn on because this is a dominant of logic circuit whereby 2 PB is the priority okay so let's take a look at this okay step by step so imagine when I press 1 PB and 2 PB together, this is what you observe. 1 PB will become normally open held close and 2 PB will become normally closed held open. Will 1 CR turn on? No, it will not. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So when I press 1 PB, normally open held close and then I press 2 PB, normally close held open, the light bulb will never turn on when these two buttons are being pressed simultaneously. Okay, so that's why it's called a dominant of logic circuit because 2 PB is the priority, okay, as it breaks the circuit over here. Okay, so that's the end of the simulation for dominant of logic circuit. Let's take a look at this dominant on logic circuit, okay. So in dominant on logic circuit, we connected the 2 PB at the latch here. So let's take a look at how it works first. When I first press 1 PB, the coil of 1CR will be energized, the contact will close and it will power on its own coil and the light bulb will be on. Okay, so let's visualize this first. I will press 1 PV momentarily in slow motion. Okay, okay. You can see that the light bulb is now on. So, what happens when I press 2 PV? By pressing 2 PV at this point of time, I will cut off the power okay going to the coil and hence the coil will be de-energized and the contact will go back to its normally open position and the light bulb will be off okay so let's visualize this in slow motion so 2 pv will be pressed momentarily okay and the light bulb is now off so what happens if you have 1 pv and 2 pv pressed together okay just like in the previous case so I'm going to make sure that 1 PB will become normally open held close and 2 PB will become normally close held open, okay, when two of them are being pressed. So let's take a look. So 1 PB is now normally open held close and 2 PB is now normally close held open. You can see that 1 CR is still being energized, okay, because of this path here. It allows current to flow through to energize the coil and hence the contact of one CR will change and the light bulb will be on okay so this is why it's called dominant on logic circuit because one PB has priority it will turn on one CR even if you press two PB in this circuit okay so let me put this circuit back to original position and I hope you understand this simulation video on dominant off and dominant on logic circuit for now, we will focus on dominant off logic circuit design in our application. Now we are back to the worksheet, okay? And earlier I illustrated to you why this circuit is called dominant off and this circuit is called dominant on, okay? So just to recap again, if you take a look at this dominant off latching circuit, the reason why it's called dominant off is because when you press these two buttons together, 2PB has priority, meaning that 
2 PB, if you press in this circuit, it will become normally closed held open. Okay, in other words, no current will flow through to 1 CR to energize it. Hence, even if you press 1 PB, okay, with your 2 PB being pressed down, okay, which is normally closed held open, the light bulb will never turn on. That's why it's called dominant off latching circuit, okay? And for this, it's called dominant on because, take a look, if you press these two buttons together, okay, 1 PB will still be able to allow current to flow through even if you press this to become normally closed head open. That's why in this circuit, on has priority when both buttons are pressed, okay? All this you can see in the simulation circuits which I have shown you earlier. Okay, so you may want to copy down this answer first. And just to take note, from now onwards, we will focus on this circuit first, okay, because it has safer control, okay. Why is it called safer control? Again, it's because this off has priority, okay. Just imagine, if you are, this one is not a light bulb, this one is a motor instead, okay? What happened is, if you, someone press the start button, 1 PB, okay, to turn on the motor, and you need to stop the motor from moving urgently, because it's going to crush someone's finger, okay? So by pressing 2 PB, it will just cut off the circuit, even if someone keep continuously in panic mode, keep pressing 1 PB, okay? So, because 2 PB has been pressed, okay, it will just stop the whole system. So, that's why this is always safer, okay. So, some things to take note from this diagram. The one I highlighted in yellow is called the start condition. And the one I highlighted in red is called the stop condition, okay. Or you can call it the on condition and the off condition. Remember, things always have a start and a stop, okay? Who start this thing, who stop this thing? Or who turn on this thing, who turn off this thing, okay? Definitely in a control circuit, you will have this, okay? The start and the stop, okay? Just remember, IA has no formula. This is just a template for you to remember, to fall back on when you're thinking of how to design control circuit. Okay, with this, we will go on to the next page. where we will take a look at latching circuit with time delay. Now we will look at this scenario whereby um, when the start push button is pressed, the light bulb will turn on. After a certain time, the light bulb will be off. Okay, So it's good to write down the flow of events so that we can actually fill in the diagrams easily. So the question says, when you press the 1PB, okay, the light bulb will be on. After a preset time, maybe I write here 5 seconds, okay, the light bulb will be off. Okay, looking at this flow of events, what do you think I will need? Definitely, I will need a timer relay, right, because I'm talking about timing now, okay. So, I know that I need a timer relay. Um, what does a timer relay comprises of? Okay, I will just draw over here. A timer relay has a coin. 1 TR and I'll write here 5 seconds because now I'm saying that the preset time is actually 5 seconds, okay? And you have the coil, you must have the contact. It must come together, okay? So you can either draw normally open 1 TR, okay? This is how you draw a timer relay, normally open. Or you can draw a normally close 1 TR, okay? So I have to make use of this to fill in the diagram. Okay, so let's take a look at this diagram first. Okay, before we do the question, it's always good to label down what is the purpose of the control relay. Because control relay are signal processing element, right? It's like the brain of the system, right? So when you use a control relay, it must have some purposes or else you will not put inside a diagram. So what is the purpose of this control relay 1CR, okay? So to get a hint of what is the purpose, I'll look at the contact of 1CR, okay? First, 1CR is a, is, is a latching circuit, okay? This one, uh, you, you should know not by now. 
Another purpose is it is used to control the light bulb. Correct? So when a coil is being energized, the contact will close, the light bulb will turn on. When a coil is not energized, the contact will stay open and the light bulb will be off. So the purpose of 1CR, I'll write here, is to turn on and off 1LB. Okay? And previously, if you still remember, in the last worksheet, I mean in the last page, I actually show you, um, I told you that Things on the left here is the start condition. Things in the center, uh, out of the latch. This is the latch, right? Out of the latch means outside the latch is called the stop condition. Okay, so I can see that when you press 1 LB, 1 CR will turn on, the light bulb will turn on. So 1 PB, sorry, not 1 LB, it's 1 PB. So 1 PB is the start condition. Okay, so who is supposed to stop the light bulb? Okay, according to my flow of events over here, 5 seconds later, the light bulb will turn off. Okay, how do I know it's 5 seconds later? So that's why I need the timer relay over here, okay? Which you can see. So first thing, um, should I fill in the coil or the contact over here? Obviously, I must fill in the contact because the contact can change, right? So should I fill in the normally open or the normally closed? Okay, let's try and fill in the normally open first, okay? So now I fill in the normally open 1TR. Do you think the circuit will work? Okay, let's visualize. When you press 1PB, because 1TR is still open, it will never energize the control relay and hence the light bulb will never turn on because the control relay coil is not energized. So I cannot draw normally open. I have to draw normally close 1TR. Okay, so let's visualize again. When you press 1PB, okay, because this is close, it will stay close and the coil will be energized, the contact will close, the light bulb will turn on. Okay, 5 seconds later, this contact is supposed to change. Okay, uh, who will make it change is the coil, right? So, I haven't drawn the coil of the timer relay yet, which is here. So, how do I, who should energize this timer relay coil? Okay, ask yourself, who should start this timing first? Can I say that the moment you press 1 PB, you should start this 5 seconds timer? Okay, so there are two ways of drawing this answer. The first way is to, I'll show you the easiest way. Okay, which is to draw the timer relay just, the coil just below the 1 CR. Because remember I told you, the coil, okay, can never be connected in series. Uh, I went through this with you all in EP3, it must always be in parallel. Okay, so let's visualize this again. Okay, five seconds. Remember to write the timing. Okay, so when I press 1 PB, because the contact is, is still closed, because the coil is not energized, right? 1 CR will turn on and 1 TR will be energized. Okay, only five seconds later, this contact will open. Okay. And because this contact is open, no more current going to the coil and the timer relay. And hence, because the control relay has no more power, it will go back to open position. The light bulb will be off. Okay. So, when you press 1PB, again, 1CR will turn on and this contact will close. The light bulb will be on. And then this timer relay will need 5 seconds. Okay. 5 seconds later... Then this contact of the timer relay will open to cut off power to the 1 CR. Okay. So when there's no more power to 1 CR and 1 TR coil, okay, what happened is this thing here will become open again. It will stay as where it is originally. And hence the light bulb will be off. Okay. Um, we will take a look at the simulation circuit now for you to visualize this so that you can have a better uh, understanding on how this circuit works, okay? Now we'll take a look at this latching circuit with time delay simulation circuit. So this is the exact circuit we have drawn in your worksheet. So let me give you a brief overview first so that you know what to look out for when we run this simulation. So when I press 1PB, you will observe that 1CR coil will be energized and the contact will close, okay? And the light bulb will turn on. And because of this latch over here, 
Okay, this contact will provide continuous power to energize one CR and one TR and hence the light bulb will stay continuously on even though one PV is only being pressed momentarily. Okay, and the second thing to observe later on is you will see that this timer relay will be energized and five seconds later you can observe this contact of the timer relay to open. Okay, it will become normally closed help open and hence no more power going to one CR coil and one TR and because of that the light bulb goes off okay and you will also observe that when one TR has no more power okay this contact will go back to normally closed position it will go back to its original position the moment its coil has no more power okay so let's take a look at the simulation now so when I press one PV momentarily Okay, coil is being energized, the contact will close, light bulb will turn on. Five seconds later, you will observe that this timer contact, okay, will become normally closed, help open, okay. The moment that happens, no more power to control relay coil and timer relay coil, and light bulb will go off, and this contact will slowly change back from normally closed, help open later on to normally open. So, see that? Okay, so this is how this circuit works. Now, let's go back to the worksheet. Now, we are back at the worksheet and I'm going to go through part D, latching circuit 2 with time delay. Okay, so let's take a look at latching circuit 2 with time delay over here. So, when the start push button is pressed, okay, the buzzer will turn on 3 minutes later. Okay, the buzzer will remain on and turn off only when 2 PB is pressed. Okay, so let me write down the control chain, okay, or the flow of events. So, when you press the 1 PB, Okay, three minutes later, I'm supposed to turn on the buzzer. Correct? Okay, and the buzzer will remain on until you press 2 PV. Okay, maybe I should write that on here. Okay, then the buzzer will be off. Okay, so this is exactly how this circuit is going to behave. When you press 1 PV, three minutes later, the buzzer will be on and it will stay on. Until you press 2 PV, the buzzer will go off. Okay, so you saw the timing involved 3 minutes, so definitely I'll need a timer relay. Okay, 1 TR and it's a 3 minutes timer relay. Um, the coil of the timer relay, I need to draw the contact of the timer relay as well. So I can draw normally open or normally close. Okay, so I will see how they are going to fit into the diagram over here. Okay, so let's take a look at this circuit first and as I emphasized to you earlier, um, we always take a look at what is the purpose of any control relay or timer relay that has been designed in the circuit and then we will decide what we should do later on. So always write down the purpose first is to help us to guide us to solve the question. So take a look at 1CR, okay. The purpose of 1CR, um, I will take hint from the context of it. Okay, so looking at the contact, 1 is to provide the latching circuit. Okay, so that when you press 1PB, one 1CR one will turn on forever. Okay, and another purpose of 1CR is to turn on the timer relay coil. Okay, in fact, it's going to turn on and off the timer relay coil. Okay, so I'll write over here. On, off, timer. Okay, the 3 minutes timer. Okay, there's only one timer here, which is the 3 minutes timer. Okay, so I already wrote this. Let's look back at the flow of events here. When I press 1 PB, 3 minutes later, the buzzer will turn on. Okay, so let's analyze. When I press 1 PB, 1 CR will be energized. The contact will close and the timer relay will be energized. 3 minutes later, I'm supposed to turn on the buzzer. So over here, it should be the 3 minutes later turn on the buzzer, correct? Okay, so I should draw the contact of the timer relay because only the contact of the timer relay can switch, okay? And I already draw the coil of the timer relay. So there should only be one coil of the timer relay and you can draw the contact of the timer relay over here. So should I draw normally open or normally close? Okay, let's try normally close. Okay. And let's think, okay? 
when this circuit, okay, this is the plus as usual, this is the minus, okay, when this circuit is being powered on, okay, normally closed will stay normally closed until the timer relay coil has been energized. So, in other words, the buzzer, the moment you turn the power supply of this circuit, the buzzer will immediately turn on, okay. Is that what you want? No. We only want it to turn on 3 minutes later after I turn on, I mean after I press 1 PV. So I cannot draw a normally close 1 TR. Let's try and draw a normally open 1 TR. Okay. And let's visualize. When I press 1 PV, 1 CR will turn on. Okay. And because 1 CR turn on, the, co the contact will close and you will charge this timer relay coin. Okay, the buzzer till now is still off because this contact is open. Three minutes later, okay, upon being energized, okay, what happened to this is it will close and the buzzer will turn on. Okay, let's look at this again. When I press 1 PB, 1 CR turn on. When 1 CR turn on, the coin, the contact will close and the timer relay will be charged. Three minutes later, this contact of the timer relay will close, then the buzzer will turn on. Okay, this exactly fits what I want over here, which is 1 PB press, 3 minutes later, then the buzzer turns on. Okay, now what should I put over here? Okay, the only way to turn off this buzzer is to make sure that the contact falls back to open position, right? So how do you make sure that it goes back to its original position? Well, by just making sure that there's no more power to the timer relay coil. So in other words, when the timer relay coil has been de-energized, no more power, one CR will go back to open position and the buzzer will be off. So I know previously that the purpose of one CR is to turn on and off this timer relay coil. So now I need to turn off this timer relay coil so that this one goes back to open position when your 2 PB has been pressed so that the buzzer will be off. So over here, I should draw the 2 PB, okay? So remember what I said earlier. This is always the start condition. This is the stop condition, which means this is the condition to turn on the timer. This is the condition to turn off the timer. Now I want to turn off the timer so that the contact will go back to normal position. So what should I draw? 2 PB normally open or normally close? Okay, I will have to draw normally close. Why is that so? Okay, let me explain to you. Only by drawing normally close, when you press, it will become normally close help open and hence it will break the circuit. And hence, once here we have no more power, because the coil has no more power, the contact will go back to open, the timer relay will be off. That's why you draw normally close here. Okay, and previously I already gave you an example on what happens if you draw normally open and why it doesn't work. So if you don't understand that, you may want to look back earlier, okay, at the video to see what happens. Okay, for now. I will bring you again to the simulation circuit to show you exactly how this slashing circuit with time delay works for the buzzer. Okay? Now we will take a look at the next slashing circuit with time delay. And this is the circuit we are drawing in our worksheet. So a few things to observe when I start the simulation later. First, when this 1PB is being pressed momentarily, one CR coil will be energized and the contact will close. And one CR coil will be kept energized because of this latching circuit. Okay, so this is the first thing you will observe. Second, you will see that because one CR contact is closed, it will energize this timer relay coil constantly. Three minutes later, you will observe that this timer relay contact will become normally open, held, closed. Okay, and hence the buzzer will turn on. Okay. So, when will the buzzer turn off? Okay, so you can see that the buzzer will turn off as long as there's no more power going to the timer relay coil. And how do you ensure there's no more power going to the timer relay coil? You just need to ensure that there's no more power going to the control relay too. 
okay? Because if there's no more power going to a control relay coil, the contact will be open. No power to the timer relay coil. This contact will switch to normally open position and the buzzer will be off. Okay, so let's watch this in slow motion. When I press 1 PB momentarily, okay, 1 CR will be closed, okay, as you can see over here. Okay, the timer relay is now being energized, okay. So 3 minutes later, you will observe that this one will be normally open, held, closed, and you will be kept at this position because the coil is constantly being energized, okay. So let's watch. So now, timer relay contact is normally open, help close. The buzzer is on, okay? The buzzer will become off when there's no more power going to timer relay coil. Because if there's no power going to here, this thing will switch back to open position, okay? How do I make sure that no power going to here? I just need to make sure that the control relay coil is off, okay? So that this contact of the control relay will go back to normally open. Okay, so I'm going to cut off the power going to this control relay coil now. As you can see, okay, no more power to the control relay coil. One CL will be off, contact will be open again. No power going to the timer relay coil. This timer relay contact will switch back to its original position which is normally open and the buzzer will be off. Okay, so to summarize, when you press 1 PB, 3 minutes later, the buzzer will turn on because of this timer relay contact, okay? When you press 2 PB, the buzzer will immediately goes off, okay? Because you have de-energized the control relay for 1 CR and subsequently for 1 TR. So this is how this circuit works and we are going to go back to the worksheet. So now we are back to the worksheet and we will go through the next page which is motor control circuit and we will first start off with start stop control. So let's read the question. When the start push button is actuated momentarily, the motor will be switched on via motor contactor MR1 and the conveyor starts to move. The conveyor will stop when the stop push button is actuated. So first, let's write down how this circuit is going to work. Okay, so when you press 1 PB, the motor will be on via MR1, okay, motor on. So when you press 2 PB, the motor will be off. Okay, and let's take a look at the circuit over here. When you press 1 PB, 1 CR coil will be energized and the contact of this control relay 1 CR will close and the motor contactor MR1 will turn on. So when this coil MR1 turns on, the contact of this motor contactor MR1 will also become closed and allows current to flow to the motor to make it move. Okay, so this is how when you press 1 PB, the motor will turn on. So when you press 2 PB, the motor is going to go off. Okay, so there is no 2 PB in this circuit yet. Okay, so we are going to think of how are we going to implement this 2 PB. Okay, before we do anything, let's write down what is the purpose of this 1 CR. Okay, so as you can see, and you can get the hint from this contact 1 CR that it is used to turn on and off the motor contactor, which will in turn turn on and off the motor. Okay, so I will write here on and off MR1, okay, or motor. Okay, so next, the question says that the push button is only going to be actuated momentarily. Okay, momentarily means you press and let go. Okay, you press your finger at 1 PB, normally open will become normally open, help close. One or two seconds later, you let go and the push button will go back to open position. So how are we going to make sure that when you press 1 PB, 1 CR will turn on forever? Okay, one way of doing it is to do latching, which I taught you previously. So I will draw a latch here. Okay, so let's visualize again. When you press 1 PB, okay, you will energize this control relay coil, 1 CR, and hence the latch will close because normally open will become normally open held close. Hence, 1 CR will be forever on at this point of time. 
okay and hence the motor will move okay and I told you before um, earlier that things that turn on must be able to turn off okay or else this is will be a flaw in the circuit okay so when should you turn off this motor relay okay or motor contactor okay so I can just draw something here so that when the 2 PB is being pressed one CR will be cut off, okay, which means that no more power to one CR coil and one CR contact will go back to open position and no more power going to the motor contactor and hence the motor will not move, okay. So I will draw a normally close to PV, okay, just like previous, so that when you press 2 PB, normally close, you become normally close, help open, and it will cut off this circuit, and hence, no more power going to 1 CR coil. The contact will be open, okay, it will stay open, and no more power going to the motor contactor, and hence, the motor will not move, because if the coil of the motor contactor is not energized, the contact will stay the same, which means that it's going to stay normally open okay and hence the motor will not move so to summarize just like previous case things on the left is actually the start condition okay so you can see that when you press 1 pb you will start the motor contactor the moment you press 2 pb okay which is outside the latch okay that's why i draw in the middle here okay so when you press 2 pb you will cut off current going to 1 cr and hence since the coil of the control relay is not energized the motor contactor will be off because the control relay contact will stay open and hence no more power going to the motor contactor and hence the motor will not move. So with this, I'm able to solve this question using the same technique. Okay, who turn off the who turn on the control relay and who turn off the control relay? Okay, let's take a look at the simulation diagram uh, circuit to visualize better. Now, I'll take a look at the simulation circuit for motor start-stop control. As you can see, on the left here is the motor drive circuit. On the right here is the main electrical ladder diagram control circuit to control the motor contactor. So, you can see that on the left here, the motor contactor is being wired to a different voltage as compared to the electrical ladder diagram. The reason is because the motor itself may require a different voltage as compared to the main electrical ladder diagram. Some motors require 100 volts depending on the motor you have purchased. So now let's take a look at how we can drive the motor using a motor contactor and of course with this electrical ladder control. So let's take a look. When I press 1 PV momentarily, you can see that 1 CR will be energized. Okay, the contact will close. This is the latching circuit. Okay. And because one CR contact is now closed, the motor contactor coil is now being energized. The contact of this motor contactor will also close and the motor will turn on. Okay, how do I turn off this motor? Well, I just need to make sure that the coil of this motor contactor is off so that this motor contactor contact will go back to open position. And to do that, all I need to do is to press 2 PV, okay? You can see that by pressing 2 PV, it will become off because just now when I press, I cut off the power to the coil. The contact becomes open again. The motor contactor coil has no more voltage. The contact of this motor contactor is now open back to its original position. Normally open, the motor is now off. So this is how we can design a motor start-stop control with the, such a simple circuit. We are now back to the worksheet again and this time round we are going to look at motor control with time delay, okay? So when the start push button is pressed, the DC motor turns on, after a preset time expire, the motor will stop, okay? So first, let's draw the flow, okay? So when you press 1 PV, motor on okay after maybe a certain delay okay uh maybe i write um eight seconds later okay what happens 
motto will goes off okay which is what the question is saying okay since the question did not specify any preset time delay uh, I will just set it at eight seconds okay so looking at this question I know I will need a timer okay so let me draw the timer here first I will know I will need a timer relay of 8 seconds and I will need to draw either normally open okay and I need to label the symbol or normally close depending on the question okay okay first let's take a look at this circuit diagram first okay so again this is plus this is minus okay some of y'all may wonder um, why is it that this motor contactor MR1 needs to be um, tied to the motor voltage okay why not directly tied to this positive okay well the reason is this motor voltage can be up to 100 volts okay and this plus here normally is only 24 volts okay which is what we did in our lab so that is why we need this motor contactor so that your contact of this motor contactor can be tied to the motor voltage because this motor may need 100 volts to drive okay so depending on what type of motor you are using so that's why normally we have this motor contactor tied to a different voltage okay so now let's take a look and before we do this question the first thing is always to write down what's the purpose of this control relay and we can get a hint from here you can see that the contact of this control relay is here and it's used to control the motor contactor so again the purpose is to turn on and off the motor contactor okay and as we learned previously this is the start condition of the control relay which means that when you press one pb the control relay coil will be energized and the contact will close and hence it will turn on this motor contactor which in turns close this contact of this motor contactor and turns on the motor so by turning on this motor contactor i'm turning on the motor hence this is the start condition which we learned previously nothing changed who will turn off the motor okay as we read the flow here you can see that eight seconds later we're supposed to turn off the motor okay so what should i draw here okay i will draw normally close timer relay so that eight seconds later this timer relay will open and then cut off power to this control relay coil and so that there will this control relay contact will stay open and no more power to the motor contactor and hence the motor will just stop moving so i will draw for the stop condition i will draw normally close make sure that you actually touch it okay timer contact okay so that eight seconds later this timer contact will open and cut off current going to one cr so that no more power going to motor contactor 2 and motor will be off so you draw the contact of the timer relay you must draw the coil okay because they all come together okay if you never draw the coil of this timer relay this contact will never switch it will just stay close and then there's no point drawing okay so i need to draw the coil of this timer relay ask yourself when do you need to start this timer okay i will start this timer when i press the push button okay so one way of answering this question is to draw like the previous example over here you draw the timer relay here and just put the eight seconds there okay the timer relay coil is always on the right hand side because it's a signal processing element okay so you can draw this way okay so that when you press the one pb the timer relay will be activated okay eight seconds later then this timer contact will switch and cut off power to the motor contactor okay this is one method of drawing which i taught you previously this time around i'm not going to draw this way i'm going to show you another way of drawing which both answers are the same uh, i mean are correct okay so instead of drawing this which you learned earlier okay i'm going to teach you another way since they really draw an additional rung for me to show you okay so again as i told you the second way will be just drawing the control relay okay the timer coil on the right hand side and write down there eight seconds it's very important to write the preset time and ask yourself 
when do you want to turn on this timer relay as i said just now when you press the push button the timer relay coil should start okay it's just like you physically hold a stopwatch and when should you start this timer when you press the 1 pb okay so instead of drawing 1 pb over here all we need to do is draw 1 cr okay why because when you press 1 pb 1 CR coil will be energized and the contact will close and the timer will start, okay? This is the correct answer. You cannot draw 1 PB here, okay, which some of the students will definitely ask. Why is this so? Why is this wrong? Well, this is wrong because when you press 1 PB, okay, and then are you going to hold your finger there forever? You are not, right? Because the question... Okay, it's still momentarily, okay, even though they never stayed here, it's still the same as previous question, whereby when 1PB is pressed momentarily, okay? Okay, so when 1PB is pressed momentarily, means that you press and let go. The moment you let go, your timer relay will not be energized, correct? So that's why we will not put 1PB here. Instead, we put 1CR because when you press 1PB, 1CR will also turn on and you will turn on forever because of this latch. Until 8 seconds later, then this contact will switch and turns off the control relay. Okay, so with this, I hope you understand. And to conclude again, 1PB is the start condition of turning on the motor. And 1TR contact is the stop condition to turn off the motor. Now we will take a look at this simulation circuit motor control with timer. On the left here is the motor drive circuit. On the right here is the electrical ladder control circuit. So there are two observations I want you all to make. The first is when you press 1PB, the control relay coil will be energized and it will be kept energized because of this latch. Okay, The contact of this control relay will be closed and hence the motor will turn on because the motor contactor coil will be energized. The contact of this motor contactor will be on. The motor will be on. Okay, so this is the first observation I want you all to make. The second observation will be, you will realize that because this control relay contact is closed, you will keep energizing this timer relay coil. And five seconds later, what happens is this contact of this timer relay will become normally closed, held open, cutting off power to the control relay coil. And hence, because there's no power going to the control relay coil, all the contact will become back to its original position, which is normally open. And hence, the motor will be off. Okay? So, let's visualize this. When I press 1 PV, the motor turns on. Five seconds later, this contact will become normally closed, held open, as you can see. No power to the control relay coil. Everything is now back to its open position, and hence the motor is off. Okay, so now let's go back to the worksheet. Now we are at the worksheet direct and indirect control, okay, whereby when you press a push button, the piston of a single acting or double acting cylinder will extend from its initially retracted position. When the push button is released, the cylinder will retract, okay. So as you can see, we are having single solenoid directional control valve here. This one is the three root two-way single solenoid directional control valve. This one is the four two-way. This one is the five two-way, okay. So please go and draw the internals of this directional control valve in your worksheet, okay? Now, I would like to go through the control chain again, which you learned in chapter 1. Input element, signal processing element, final control element, and output elements, okay? So, for direct control, it means that you are not going to use any signal processing element, meaning you do not need any brain in the system, okay? So, examples of direct control will be push button, directly control the solenoid so can you imagine when you press the push button you will energize this solenoid and because once you energize this solenoid the switch board will switch to this box okay and the cylinder will extend so this is called direct control which means it does not use any signal processing element you can see 
1 PB is an input element. Number 1, I already wrote here, is an input element. Directional control bar solenoid is a final control element. Okay, so in solution 1, we are using input and final control without the use of a brain. Okay, well, that's why normally we don't do direct control because the circuit is not as simple as what you think. We want to have slightly more intelligent control. Okay, so let's take a look at solution 2, which is the control that we are going to adopt over here, which means that we need signal processing elements, okay, which is a control relay in this case. So as you can see, in indirect control, we make use of control relay, which is a signal processing element, uh, right number two here. Okay, so you can see that input element 1PB will turn on the signal processing element, okay. And then once the control relay coil is being energized, the contact will close and the solenoid will be on. Okay, when the solenoid is on, the cylinder will extend. Okay, same for these three diagrams over there. Okay, so you can see that in solution two, we use signal processing element, which is the type of control we want. Okay, so why is indirect control necessary? Well, first, in real life application, the circuit is more complex. Okay, so it's impossible to use direct control. Okay, and in some cases where I need higher voltage, okay, so for instance, I think I gave you this example before previously, okay, well, for instance, I have a light bulb, a 100 volts light bulb that requires 100 volts to turn on, okay, so instead of directly control push button to a 100 volts light bulb using a 100 volt supply, that is considered dangerous because if you connect, okay, for instance, let me show you. If you connect a push button to a 100 volts power supply just to power on this 100 volts light bulb, okay, this is considered dangerous control, okay? Why? Because if something is wrong with the push button and you when you press the push button, you accidentally um, touch this 100 volts power supply, what will happen is you will get electrocuted. Correct? So, we don't want this. Instead, we separate out. The push button is connected to a standard 24 volt supply. Okay? And hence, when you press the push button, 24 volts will go through and the current will then turn on the control relay coil. So, once the coil is being turned on, the contact will change. So, the contact of 1CL will be closed and the light bulb will be on. Okay? And as you can see, the contact of the control relay is connected to 100 volts instead. Okay, and humans touch the button. We don't touch the contacts. The contacts is already pre-wired to the 100 volts. But for the push button, you still need to press. So there is always a risk if you connect a 1PB to a 100 volt supply, which is considered dangerous. Okay, which is what I draw earlier to illustrate to you. So with this, I would like to summarize that we will adopt indirect control in all our circuit design. First, our application again is more complex and hence we need to introduce brains into the system which in this case will be the control relay. Okay. So with this, I will go to the next page. Now we'll take a look at direct control versus indirect control simulation circuit. So on the left here is the direct control. On the right here is the indirect control. So what's the key difference? As I told you, indirect control means we use control relay. Okay, direct control means you are actually wiring the input element directly to the final control element. Okay, unlike this, we wire to the brain, which is the control relay, and the brain will control the final control element. Okay, so let's take a look at the direct control first. So this is a 5-2 way single solenoid normally open directional control valve and this is a double acting cylinder. You can see that the default position is always at the spring over here. So this is the check box that is at. You can see that the cylinder is retracted because the air is going to the rod side of the cylinder. Okay, 
So imagine, the moment I press 1 PV, I'm going to energize 1 SOL. So this cylinder will be energized, it will switch to this box and the cylinder will extend. Okay, so let's visualize this. When I press 1 PV and I hold it there, you can see that it will switch to this box because the cylinder has been energized and the cylinder is extended. The moment I release 1 PV, it will go back to spring position and the cylinder will retract. Okay, so this is direct control. Let's take a look at indirect control, whereby we are using control relay. We will still see the same behavior on this directional control valve and the cylinder. It's just that we are introducing a control relay as the signal processing element to control the circuit. Okay, Because in real life application, the circuit is not as simple as this. It's more complex. So we will adopt indirect control in our circuit design later on. Hence, let's take a look at this. When I press 1 PB, control relay coil will be energized. The contact will change. So from normally open, it will become normally open, help close, and the solenoid will turn on. So when the solenoid is on, you can see the cylinder will extend because it will switch to this box. Let's observe this. So when I press 1 PB and I hold it there, you can see that the control relay coil is energized, the contact is closed, and solenoid is energized. Cylinder is now fully extended. Okay. So now the moment I release 1 PV, control relay coil is de-energized. The contact will become open. No power going to the solenoid. You go back to spring position and the cylinder will be retracted. 